All right, we've got rider market news updates, chaos, really, um, however you want to look at it. Announced officially this morning, Anea Bastianini and Maverick Vinales, of all people, joining KTM Tech 3. Le with Hervé Poncherol's team uh, next season. Now, the Bastianini thing we expected, I mentioned that when I did my video on the Mark to Ducati News. So that one was just like, when's the announcement coming? Obviously, they were waiting for this, right? So here's a left field one. Let's discuss that quickly. Uh, at the end of the second part of this video is going to be me trying to make sense of what's happening and who's going to end up where kind of thing which for the last half hour I've been sitting at this desk just racking my brain and really not getting anywhere but we're going to look through my thought process there and have a chat and see where I think this might be going even though we can't possibly predict it first let's talk about this announcement of this morning now KTM is obviously making a big play in the rider market here because whereas in the past they've been happy with don't want to say second rate subpar anything like that top level riders obviously if you're going to moto gp but often you know the glow up for tech three's lineup from was it 2021 where it was petrucci and lequona which is not all bad obviously but to this now is ridiculous in terms of the pedigree of the riders they went from that to a two rookie team which they hated obviously, because they just ditched it straight away, to two proven race winners from factory teams. They're coming directly from factory teams to come and join them in this satellite setup. Now, another part of the news where I guess this is where they've managed to make the play for these guys, where, you know, you're not seeing, you know, you've drawn Maverick out of a factory team of a bike that can win races and you've drawn Bastianini. Now I'm assuming he's had contact from factories, Bastianini, and including Aprilia, because we know the move for Martin came late. So I wonder if he was talking to them already. The word was that, or the sus suspicion was that he was, or they were interested in him. So to draw his eye away from potential factory rides to take this KTM seat, there's two factors at play here. The first thing is they're obviously throwing money at these guys. They've decided that the last piece in their puzzle is to, pair the rider or to have a strong rider lineup across two teams four bikes to deliver them the highest possible scenario of challenging Ducati the other is that they've been they're turning this tech three team into basically a satellite factory team if that makes sense I know two different terms it doesn't really make sense but it's basically a second factory team in the sense it's gonna have two factory bikes factory support I'm assuming they've been told when updates come they probably getting them like pretty quickly after or not at the same if not at the same time as the factory boys otherwise you know how you're luring a factory rider because i'm sure the offer was there from aprilia to just keep mav as well i'm sure they discussed that so the other thing that's sort of drawn them in is that so you're not getting it you're not you're not getting in the factory team we've got binder and acosta but we're going to set you up like this kind of periphery satellite team i don't know how else to put it you basically have the same opportunity as them to go and win things so Huge play, and, and this all comes with a big rebranding for Tech 3, so they're going to be a Tech 3 factory KTM team, Red Bull KTM, I think it's going to be. They're no longer going to be just a Gas Gas satellite team or a Gas Gas branded satellite team. A proper play from KTM. We know in the past that they have wanted to add an extra rider to their factory stable, like run with three factory riders, which we've seen Honda do in the past and stuff like that. They got told they couldn't do it, and so basically they're going down this direction now. They're going down this route where, yeah, you're in a different garage, but you're getting everything, right? That is the big reason I think they've been able to draw these guys in. Now, you may ask questions as to, I mean, Bastianini, you've got a young guy. I mean, not at the top, top of his game because we know what he's truly capable of, but close to it. And you have to imagine getting back to that kind of form is surely just around the corner for him. Uh, so you've got a guy, young guy, sort of around the top of his game. and But I mean, I guess... They've obviously lost a lot of money to Maverick. I have to assume there's a big amount of money involved in this. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just speculating. Because um, you've you've taken him from a factory team to join a satellite team. I have to assume he's still on factory level money. Otherwise, he'd surely just try and negotiate his way into keeping his ride at Aprilia. I guess the question is, with his inconsistencies in the past, and he can just sort of, a bit of a damp squib in the maverick sometimes it's just like the pace comes and goes and it goes for longer than it's there for is this a play for them to get four riders near the front when you know that mav could go off the boil or is this more of a we need an experienced guy who's worked on lots of different machines and is capable of just coming out of nowhere and being the quickest guy in the paddock for two three weekends at a time and then goes off the boil 
maybe we'll get a race win or two out of him. But mainly an experienced guy that's worked on three different machines who knows the ins and outs of... I would assume he's good at developing a bike by this stage. He's worked with Suzuki. It was a really good project there where he was he was strong. He worked at Yamaha and they were a really good project at the time. And then at Aprilia now where obviously he wasn't involved on the ins and outs. But it was more of a Spargaro's development of that bike. But when he came in, he saw what they were doing. You're, you're not just signing a rider, you're signing knowledge. So I guess that's the main thing for them in bringing in a guy like him. Rather than say, for example, stick with a Miller which are probably getting a similar level of guy. I guess Maverick's probably, well, definitely edging Jack this season. But in the past, I mean, I've got them at about the same level, I suppose. But Miller also came with a, come, came with a or still has, that knowledge of working on different machines. Um, and could they have just stuck? And look, we are assuming in all this that he would just take that ride if they offered it him. But could they have stuck with that, used him in that role? I guess probably. They wanted Mav, right? For some reason, they, they want Mav over keeping Jack, for example. The other thing in this is that you don't know, Aprilia, after going hard after Martin and getting him, maybe they just weren't interested in keeping Mav. Maybe they are looking somewhere else and he saw the riding on the wall and he's like, I've got an offer to ride a factory bike and a satellite team in what is looking like a really big push from KTM to get four bikes near the front. Maybe that's a more, that maybe the right, he saw the riding on the wall, which would have then assumed that we know who Aprilia was looking at but I think we all assumed that they were looking at Bastianini. Or Aprilia wanted to keep Mav or go for Bastianini and a KTM is just coming in with big offers and just taking riders. And that is the other thing that could be happening. My, my, if this is a bit of a ramble and a bit incoherent, it's because that's where my brain is at at the moment. On all, it's, it's just all over the place. I've actually never seen anything like this before, to be honest. Um, where basically we're going to end up with a whole grid what it's looking like, we could end up with a whole grid of mostly the same guys on the grid. It's going to be mostly the same guys, but they're all going to be riding for different teams, like 90% of them, which is just strange. It's just a bit of a, like, I don't know, I remember a time like this. So let's go through, I mean, we've discussed maybe the reasoning for KTM and the reasoning for Maverick and Anaya to make these decisions and the reasoning for Aprilia not try and match a KTM offer, for example, if it was a big offer for Mav. Let's talk about where this leaves us, because it the moment in terms of okay let's just talk about who's confirmed who's confirmed right now two pages of notes here that's and a screen with all the the graphic i'm gonna have this on the screen as well while i'm talking but this moto gp 2025 lineup thing that they moto gp have posted where it's got all the confirmed spots everyone in its place confirmed aprilia jorge martin and then second rider we don't know Ducati factory team, two riders confirmed, Peko and Mark. We know this super team. Yamaha, one rider confirmed, Fabio Quattararo. Honda, one rider confirmed, Luca Marini. When I say confirmed, I mean under contract. We know these things. I mean, contracts aren't always exactly unbreakable, right? Let's just put it at that. So when I say these are confirmed, these are right now, these guys contracted to these teams. So Honda has Marini contracted. KTM, we've spoken about them. Binder and Acosta. Tech 3, Bastianini and Maverick Vinales. LCR Honda, we have Zarco contracted, and that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten confirmed, which means we have 12 unconfirmed. Now let's start with ones that I think are probably the most likely, although this has changed so much. Like I'm about to say Yamaha, Alex Rins, surely an extension is a lock here from both sides. But I have to imagine now Aprilia is probably looking at Rins and going, all right, okay, okay. Actually, you know what? Let me, so I've listed off who's a lock. Let's have a look at just at the moment, riders that are currently in MotoGP that aren't contracted for next season. Jack Miller, Juan Mir, Alex Rins, Marco Bezzecchi, Fabio Digi, Frankie Morbidelli, Takanaka, Alex Marquez, Miguel Oliveira, and then the two Fernandez boys. Rail and Augusto. That's 11 riders. Like I said, we've got 12 spots to fill. So conceivably, they could all end up on the grid again. And then let's throw in the fact that Fermin Aldeguer is guaranteed one of these places. So for our 12 spots left, we have 11 moto, current MotoGP riders without a contract and Fermin Aldeguer is joining them. They could all end up on the grid, all 12 of them. But of course, it's a bit more complicated than that because I've got a list of another four Moto2 riders who are potentially gunning for these spots and I think a few of them are a bit more likely than a few of the MotoGP guys. So on that list, I've got Joe Roberts, Ayagura, Sergio Garcia, 
And to a lesser extent, Alonso Lopez, I've included him, but I don't realistically think that that is an option for anyone. But he's on there anyway, just as a talented Moto2 rider who's very quick. Okay, so like I was, as I was about to say, I thought Rins is just a lock to just extend at Yamaha. So I will put that down as what I think will probably happen. But I have to imagine a guy like him, the way he rides as well, from his time at Suzuki, and then, you know, I think he's... And then even picking up that race win at Honda and that satellite on the LCR bike the other year. I mean, surely Aprilia is interested in him. Now that Bastianini's off the table and they've lost Maverick, from who's available, would he be the most attractive prospect for them? Of course, we're not forgetting about his partner in crime, Joan Mir. Now, it's looking like Joan Mir... I think a move to Aprilia is probably going to be the case for him. But all the talk's been track house. And I think it's just the Brivio link. But surely they're looking... They've got to be looking at him, Aprilia, as well. You've got a world champion there. Now, if you ask me, if I'm Aprilia, would I prefer to go after Rins or me? I'd probably prefer to go after Rins. But and I know he's not the world champion. And I know that when they both went to Honda, me was the preferred for Honda being the former world champion. But I have to think on, you know, the ability to win races and things like that, I think I'd probably look at Rins ahead of that. You know, there's obviously two guys there that can go into that seat. But then also, I mean, Aprilia, the Italians, who else is on the table? I mean, for Aprilia, I've got almost everyone written down. <laughs> I've got five names written down here. Obviously, Rins and Mir, like I've just spoken about. And I've got Bezzecchi, Digi, and Frankie Morbidelli. And honestly, like, I'm going to say toss a coin, but roll a die. I just throw another name in there and roll. Uh, Oliveira. He's in the family already. There's absolutely no way of predicting this. Unless you're on the inside and you're working with these teams and and you have the inside track on it, I can't see how anyone's predicting where this goes. So let's say, for example, we call that Bez and we call Yamaha Rins. The other factory team we've got to look at is Honda. Now, the, the talk is Miller now. The talk is now Miller. Like literally, as soon as this got announced, everyone's like, well, that must be... Because there was a little bit of chat that Miller was talking to Honda rather than looking to stay within the KTM setup. And now that the KTM stuff is all a lock, it's just meant that the Miller chat to Honda is just, that's it. The interesting thing here will be, now I mentioned about people who's contracted or who's a lock for for now, Zarco at LCR. The other option for them is to promote Zarco. And maybe they're talking to Miller about an LCR ride. A little bit of a homecoming for him. Whether Miller would be interested in that, I don't know. I mean, that is an option for them if they want to go for that but i'd say miller talking to honda must be a factory ride you know say what you want about that right line up but it's probably the best they can do at the moment so we're going to put miller in that one there let's go with that and we'll leave zarko at lcr but like i said there is the option for them to promote now that's how um, factory teams done if that wasn't hard enough this is where it gets even stranger because when you move into the satellite teams where no one is confirmed except for the tech three and then zarko at lcr this could just go any which way VR46, I'd suggest, is maybe the easiest to predict because they're probably going to keep it in-house. Let's say Bez... I think they're happy, going to be happy to stay with the Bez Digi. But this gets complicated here because, like I said, Fermin Aldeguer has to fit into either Grassini, VR46, or Pramac. The problem is I'd probably just say he's going to Pramac, but we don't even know if Pramac's going to be a Ducati now because all the talk now is Pramac's having their head turned by an offer from Yamaha to be the second, uh, it would be the satellite Yamaha so, uh, squad, which would mean that Fermin cannot go there, which would then mean that I put him at Grassini. And while we're on Grassini, I think with the amount of movement and stuff that's going on, I think they're going to be happy and everyone's going to be happy to just look at Marquez, Alex, to stay there as well. Just for the sake of getting through this, like, chaotic period where who knows who you could end up with so that just having a safe bet and again that's the other thing i've not man, man, mentioned alex marquez yet but he could also have been talking to the likes of aprilia or whatever yamaha honda in those roles they might like him i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it but they might be like he's, a, he's an experienced rider now that's maybe you know we've started to see how much teams just value having an experienced guy in there i mean not the most experienced guy out there but certainly knows what he's doing, uh, could still be talking to those teams. But I think him at Grassini is, oh my God, if we have to at least make a decision here, let's at least, that is a likely one, I suppose. It's still only about 20% likely probably, but 
it's as likely as anything else. Now, let's say VR46 is losing Bez. And here's where this gets a bit complicated. Because if Bez does go to Aprilia, which he may not do, if he doesn't go to Aprilia, he's staying at VR46. No doubt. No doubt. He's a, he's a lock there. The second seat there is interesting because that would mean that who's going to Aprilia then? Maybe it is Mir or whatever. But Digi could be going into Aprilia. Imagine Digi the factory rider out of the... Uh, Who would have thought that 18 months ago, you know? Uh, but it could happen. I'd go Bez. But the thing that makes this complicated is Pramac. Now, the Pramac thing... I think the longer it goes on, the more likely it is that Pramac is going to Yamaha. I don't think this is just a long process of them renegotiating with Ducati. I think that would be done by now, or at least it will be done soon. Because why would you just be going on and on and back and forth with the team just to be like, we're just going to keep having your bikes next year, you know? So I think this is really serious with them, with Yamaha, because it's gone on. Like, how are you getting to this point now without just being like, look, if we're just staying with what we've got, let's just sign seal deliver that and i think the longer it goes on the more likely they are to go to yamaha now if they do switch to yamaha this is where i think i would i would be thinking frankie's staying there if it stays ducati maybe they don't want frankie but i think again with so much movement going on i think the same reasoning as with alex marquez it's like just stick when you can like there's a guy you know he's starting to find pace on the bike he's starting to do well um once he finds his consistency maybe you're onto something there i don't th- i think it's uh, if a team can play it safe in this situation you probably do because i think if they stay with Ducati, like i said they may ha- also have Fermin on the bike which would mean having a rookie but with a switch to yamaha i god knows what the fuck happens then i don't think frankie stays and wants to i think he just calls valentino up and he goes mate i can't ride that thing again i'm done with that i'm done which means i think he would go to vr46 along with Digi, whichever of Digi or Bez doesn't go to Aprilia, if one of them goes to Aprilia, which they may not. Again, in all this Aprilia stuff, we've not mentioned Trackhouse. Well, we did a little bit with Mir, but let's say Pramac, for argument's sake, is switching to Yamaha. In which case, I don't know who I would think would go there. Oliveira, let's just go with that because I've not used him yet in my little... Who else have I got left? Is Raul Fernandez an option there? I know Augusto Fernandez, I'm I'm saying he's not lasting another year. Right. We'll pass this year. So that leaves us with, uh, uh, again, Digi? No, because if I'm saying Bez is going to Aprilia, let's put that just because he's Italian, then let's say uh, they stick with Digi then at VR46, which would give Pramac as a Yamaha team the option of Raul Fernandez, Sergio Garcia. Let's put Raul Fernandez. <laughs> Because I think he deserves another season. And that's only, only if they move to Yamaha. I think if they stay Ducati, like I said, they're staying with Frankie. And they're probably bringing in... Oh, no, I said they'd probably get Fermin then, wouldn't they? In which case, Grassini would get someone else. Or maybe they would just put him at Grassini anyway. Maybe Pramac wouldn't want him. Because it's a factory bike. Do you want him on a factory bike in his first season? Is it a waste? Anyway, Trackhouse. I think Joe Roberts is going there. USA. USA. And then that would leave us with Mir there as well. Solely because of the Brivio thing. But I think surely they'd be talking to him or Rins. If they weren't looking seriously at a Bez or a Digi or a Frankie, they'd be looking seriously at Mir or Rins. Would Mir be like, no, 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 world champion. He gets a factory ride. So after all that scrambled eggs inside my brain, I've landed at Aprilia, Martin and Bez, don't know why. I think you're just as likely at Aprilia for that second seat to be, like I said, Digi, Frankie, Mir, or Rins. Martin and Bez, Ducati's locked. Yamaha, I've got Fabio, and let's go with Rins for an extension. Stay where he is. Honda, Marini, and Miller. Binder Acosta at KTM. Bestia and Maverick at Tech 3. Zarco, oh, we didn't talk about LCR. Jesus. That's either Takanakagami or Ayagura, right? I know Agura's not really part of the setup anymore but i still think he's the natural still think he's the natural successor to taka on that bike i think honda still want to have a japanese rider on it could 100 percent see them keeping taka and making uh, making a guru away another year otherwise yeah there is options for them would they go you know what we're seeing more from sergio garcia i know he's not japanese but let's do that it's not really their style they usually will take a less quick japanese rider over a quicker spanish rider for their non-factory seat wouldn't they Let's put that one as Ayagura, because how many years is he going to have to wait? Grassini, Alex Marquez, stay. Fermin Aldeguer, you go there as well. At VR46, Digi and Frankie. Oh, that's a good team. Pramac, I've got Raul Fernandez. <laughs> I've just got the Trackhouse team in there. 
Pramac as a Yamaha, Fernandez and Oliveira, although like I said, if I'm going to talk about them as them staying at Ducati, then I'm changing the whole video. I've got to do another video. The whole thing's going to change because it's just completely different then. People just go in other places. So let's go with them as a Yamaha because I think why not? It's a bit more fun, just this whole scenario. Fernandez and Oliveira, I don't know why them two. They're just two that I've got left. You could easily leave out either one of them and put in Garcia or Lopez to a lesser extent. Probably Garcia. And Trackhouse, I've got Mir and Roberts. But if they don't go for Roberts, they'd probably keep either Fernandez or Oliveira, which would then change Prama. Oh, for God's sake. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, have a lovely time. Tell me what you think the lineup's going to be. Do this whole th- I want to see everybody's predicted for what's left. It's got to be better than what I've done here. Oh, Jesus. See you in the next one.